Uh oh. What have we gotten ourselves into? Did you hear the lesson from Acts that Jim Weaver read? Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power and the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection, to the resurrection of, our, of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds, proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. Are you up to that? Are you ready? Is this mode of Christian community one you're willing to affirm and embrace? And did you hear the gospel lesson? Did you really? When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After that, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. The disciples are being commissioned. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Are you up for this? Are you really? Are we nuts? <laughs> what have we gotten ourselves into? Are you willing to exercise the power Jesus gives you by breathing on you? The power and obligation to decide whose sins to forgive and whose not to forgive. We're just eight days into the Easter season and something wild. <laughs> really wild is going on. But before we lapse into bemusement at how idealistic and silly that sense of Christian community all sounds, let's see what sort of real connection we might make with it all. After all, we did go to the trouble of signing on to Zoom for this service. And chances are we've already at least glimpsed some people whom we know and like and even trust. So let's delve a little further. Last Sunday, as we know, was Easter day. and what we also call the Sunday of the resurrection. The mystery of the resurrection of our Lord, of Jesus our Lord, is our focus always as Christians. 
the mystery of the resurrection is our focus, but especially in the Easter season, the season of the resurrection. The particularity of these lessons versus the breadth of the script, scriptural tradition. We're given these lessons on which to concentrate today, but they are part of a great large scriptural tradition, all of which we attend to at one time or another in one place or another, or at least that's the ideal, beginning with Genesis and concluding with the book of the Revelation to John. Those are, are our books. Uh, and we, at least in theory, we, we respect and trust them all. But it's also true that while we're given this tradition, the fact of the matter is we rarely attend to it. <laughs> I'm not surprising you by saying that, I think. You know what I mean. Uh, so there it is. And we've read these lessons for today, so it's signed particularly for today. But they're part of a great tradition that comes from a long time ago. A long time ago. Back then. Back then. And our task is to connect back then with right now. I call your attention to certain features of the lessons for today. One of them is that they focus on sin. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, you look at the, that commission, and that's the formulation for the commission. Uh, if you look at that, it's frightening. I mean, I think it is. Don't you feel frightened by that? You want the responsibility of determining whose sins get forgiven and whose don't? And in the mix, there is, of course, the question of our own sins. And the satellite question, maybe central question, if we acknowledge our sins, do we also forgive them? And are there sins that we have been guilty of that we're unwilling to forgive? What a commission. But that's back then. There's a way of connecting then and now that almost obliterates the time in between. We're reading lessons from back then about the written by the people who lived back then about their experience of the resurrection of the Lord. But what's ours? What's our experience of the resurrection of the Lord? I want to suggest that it comes to us through phrases that are very, very familiar. Even though they may also be a little intimidating. When we talk about the church, and in a way, St. Matthew's church in particular, our own church, the building, the people, everything that makes it up.
we often refer to it as, I mean, the church. We refer to it as the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Is it possible, I suggest, that our experience of the resurrection of Jesus, our Lord, is with the people with whom we associate ourselves in the church? I want to suggest some features of that that may be as important to you as they are to me. One is that if I trust that you have accepted the commission that Jesus has given to us all by being blessed by the Holy Spirit, I want to tell you that it's really important to me. It is really important to me that you, the particular people I'm talking to right now, that you forgive me. I need it. I need it so badly, so fully, so deeply and I need it from people who know me there's a sense in which my experience of the risen Lord depends on you and my experience is that you may feel much the same way. That your experience of the risen Lord, the resurrected Lord, your experience of the resurrection depends on other people forgiving you. It's what we're commissioned for. It's what it means to be the church. It's why our services are structured the way they are. That we come together. We make extended reference to then, back then. We read these lessons. And then we come to the prayer of confession. And although, to be honest, it's often a time that passes by without my thinking about it very much. And so I assume it's your experience too, that we go through it without thinking about it very much. Nonetheless, it's right at the very heart of what we call our service of worship. Oh, it's true that once we've gone through confession and in our usual gathering for the Eucharist, we go ahead to get fed with elements of his body, his body and blood. We're experiencing the resurrection of the Lord. Reach out your hand and feel the nails in my hands. Reach out your hand and feel the wound in my side. Don't be doubting, but believing. One of the favorite people from whom I've learned a lot in my long 87 years is the singer Leonard Cohen. And it's largely through his song titled Anthem 
he sings. And I'll say the words first. He sings, ring the bell that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Ring the bell that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Leonard Cohen sings. Because experiencing the risen Lord is not something exclusive to Christians. Receiving and honoring the love that is beyond all comprehension is something that people do through a whole variety of religious traditions. It's something people have, even when they have been guilty as so many of our ancestors have been of instituting slavery. at all in any way that you and I think of it. Experience love of God that can forgive the sins of us all as silly and incomprehensible as that through the cracks of our lives. There's a certain sense in which we ought to welcome our sins.